This is the first coat here. You can start to see the second coat. Artist Michael D. sits in the solitude of his French Quarter home, touching up his latest painting. If you're not aware of his work, don't be alarmed. Art critics have called him the greatest painter happening. you've never heard of. He grew up in Metairie, but moved away with his family to New York, where he attended art school. But it was when he moved back to New Orleans in the late 80s that his life changed. And it all started with a painting he hated. I was just so upset with I, I just thought it looked horrible and they were never going to use it. I just remember throwing my brushes across the room <laughs> in the middle of the night. I was like, this looks horrible. <laughs> The piece that looks so horrible to Michael has been the logo used at the beginning of every Columbia Pictures movie for the last 16 years. There's something about being on screen <laughs> that gives you a little bit of immortality, I guess, so I'm very proud of that. It's a nice feeling, you know, it's, uh, it's a good way to impress a date. <laughs> Michael says many people oh, think boy, the uh, woman in it is actually awesome. actress Annette Bening. Not even close. This was an actual young lady that worked at the Times Picayune. That's correct. That's Jenny Joseph, and she was incredibly gracious um, and just wonderful about the whole thing. And a couple of years later, another of Michael's paintings became the logo for Polygram Pictures, and a slow starting career was moving. But it would be his next rather unusual client that would define him the federal government, or more specifically, the U.S. Postal Service. It commissioned Michael to paint a picture of New Orleans author Tennessee Williams for a postage stamp it was releasing. You see, that little stamp actually begins as a full-sized oil painting. And at the time, Michael lived around the corner in the French Quarter from where Williams wrote the classic, The Glass Menagerie. I've always had this feeling he was kind of looking over my shoulder when I was doing the painting. <laughs> I mean, you always want to put stuff in the background to kind of... Stick I always try person. to add something to tell a bit of a story with the paintings. You have to look hard on the Williams stamp, but in the background is a streetcar and inside a woman who Michael says signifies Blanche Dubois, the tragic heroine in a streetcar named Desire. The Postal Service loved the Tennessee Williams stamp so much, they asked Michael to do more, like James Dean, President Ronald Reagan, Explorers, Lewis and Clark, Humphrey Bogart, Cary Grant, and the still popular Marilyn Monroe. And it was very successful. I think it's one of the best, I think second to Elvis, it's the best selling stamp in US history. In the last decade, Michael has painted pictures that have become 21 US stamps. The last one to hit the market this year is likely his favorite, Edgar Allan Poe. He's written a book about Poe, an aficionado of sorts. He's drawn his mesmerizing face since his college days 30 years ago. And I was always attracted by Poe's face, how he looked. Um, he looked so much like one of his creations. He had a very um, romantically handsome, sad, tragic face. If you can imagine what it would be like to have your work on a stamp to live on forever, what about having your painting on the cover of Time magazine? Michael's Ben Franklin dorned the July 4th issue in 2003, and the July 4th issue in six of the last seven years are all Michael D's originals. He usually works with pictures and a human model, and for Ben Franklin, he used himself. My friend Maria um, took pictures of me with a silly looking wig on in a 19th, 18th century costume. Unfortunately, I have the same hairline. <laughs> Pretty good for an artist told by his college art teachers to change careers. What did they think? That I would never make it as a painter. <laughs> so they kind of shuffled me off to the illustration department. But um, Have you sent them some copies of Time Magazine? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> A few stamps? No. Michael has witnessed the changing of an industry where oil paintings have become a financial luxury and clients would rather use a digital camera in Photoshop. So now he's painting for him. He does personal portraits and anything that involves his true love, New Orleans. Right now, it's the city's cemeteries that speak to him. There's something just very beautiful about them, and I can't quite put it into words, and that's why I'm a painter. If I could put it into words, I'd be a writer. But thankfully, he's a painter, and one whose work will be looked upon for decades to come, the sort of longevity that every artist only dreams of. Things that will look as good in 20 years as they do now, so I do try to make my stuff um, 
you know, um, as timeless as possible.